I know that you came here for tech news. I know that you didn't come for reviews of Walmart's in-house brand baked goods. That's for the show I do after this one. They're all terrible, by the way, on purpose. Even they don't want you to buy them. Why do you keep buying them? They're like the plastic food you see in Ikea. You're not supposed to eat them. Anyway, Android laptops and desktop computers are indeed coming, as confirmed by Google exec Rick Osterloh at Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit event this morning, after years of intense yearning for such devices by people like me, who know full well that it would be just like a normal PC, but worse, what's wrong with me? Somehow I know the Samsung Dex people are already yelling at me in the comments, I said I wanted it. Well, Qualcomm CEO Cristiano Amon doesn't think it would be worse, He's seen this PC version of Android, and he, a man with a bit of financial interest in the sale of Qualcomm-powered Android devices, thinks it's incredible. I trust him. Look at this bro moment between these two. Rick smiling, it's like he built Android for PC in his garage. This official confirmation follows Google's president of the Android ecosystem, Samir Samat, casually mentioning to TechRadar earlier this year that they're combining Chrome OS and Android. Yep. Just, you know, combining them, <laughs> you know, figured, you know. <laughs> well, today Samir confirmed that this synthesis is happening next year. Yes! I mean, I don't care. Qualcomm also announced their second gen X series laptop processors, the Snapdragon X2 Elite and X2 Elite Extreme. The Extreme is mostly identical to the vanilla X2 Elite, minus some higher clocks, but is significantly different than the X2 Elite, the other one, with six less cores. Are you confused by my explanation? You should tweet at Qualcomm about it, because what the is this? Having learned nothing from their previous round of obscenely overhyped marketing for the first gen X series, which otherwise were pretty cool, Qualcomm claims these unreleased chips are the fastest and most efficient processors for Windows PCs, period. Just it. I'm not gonna touch it. Steam briefly hosted malware earlier this week when an update to the game Block Blasters introduced malicious code. Now it turns out Steam doesn't necessarily validate the updates to its otherwise verified games. Though it's expected under 500 users were affected, the scam made headlines after a Latvian pump.fun streamer and cancer patient Rivo Plavniks aka Rastaland, had $32,000 in crypto stolen after a seven hour stream, which included playing block blasters. Now, this isn't even the first time this year a game has been pulled from Steam for hosting or redirecting to malware, but Plavnik's heart-wrenching circumstances elevated the story to mainstream media. Fortunately, that lost cryptocurrency was actually made up by donations from the community. But for its part, Valve has delisted Block Blasters and seems to have notified users who played while the malicious build was active, but hasn't mentioned any plans to scan updates for malware. Because uh, is that like a skin you can get in Counter-Strike or something? I just, um, they're pretty busy. NVIDIA will invest up to $100 billion in OpenAI, raising antitrust concerns, as the biggest provider of AI accelerators takes a massive stake in one of the biggest AI companies. Now, although the Trump administration's big, beautiful bill took steps to limit the power of AI regulation, the Department of Justice did say last week that protecting competition supports the AI innovation it wants to encourage, so it might be taking a little look-see at this deal. OpenAI isn't wasting any time, though, in putting the promised funding to good use. It's working with Oracle and SoftBank to build five new data centers for its Stargate initiative that will bring the total planned capacity to seven gigawatts. Seven point, seven, no, just seven. Which Wired says is roughly the power consumption of seven nuclear reactors. Well. Uh, if the AI bubble isn't bursting quite yet, could we at least get some AI tools that are actually useful? I mean, at least Google is still trying to do something interesting with their new Google Labs Mix Board. It's a concepting board app, now in beta, which is similar to Adobe's Firefly Boards or Fig Jam. And it's meant to explore visual ideas, generate mood boards, and apparently put googly eyes on a bunch of birds. There is also Mind State Design Labs, a company with an AI model that makes psychoactive drugs without the trip. That may not sound like a thing that 
psychedelic drug enjoyers would enjoy, but apparently psychedelics are useful for treating severe mental health conditions like PTSD and literally meeting your fears face to face in another dimension isn't considered productive treatment. So it's, it's a good thing. It's, it's good for the people. Maybe not for my weekend plans, but it's good for the people. And it's even better for our sponsor. Cook Unity. Now imagine you're exhausted. You don't have time to cook dinner tonight. Ah, jeez. Oh, 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 wait, what's that? A knock at your door? You shuffle over there and open it to discover what? A delicious looking meal freshly prepared by professional chefs that you can heat up and enjoy in as little as two minutes? Now wake up. It's real. Well, not yet. You gotta sign up for Cook Unity first and you can get 50% off, but hold on to that. Cook Unity is the first chef to consumer platform with meals created by top chefs, including Food Network alums, James Beard Award winners, and acclaimed restaurant tours. We're talking shrimp and chorizo paella by chef Jose Garces, Moroccan chickpea tagine by chef Lina El Kousi, red wine braised short ribs with a carrot puree by chef Marc Forjan, and more than 350 others that you can choose yourself. Or just put in your preferences, ingredients you'd rather avoid, and Cook Unity will choose for you. Got other dinner plans? You can skip deliveries, pause, or cancel at any time. They're flexible. Go to cookunity.com tech50 or click the link in the description, use our code tech50, and you'll get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals. Wow! Unlike Walmart's house branded baked goods, these Quick Bits are made with 100% pure news. No, uh, they, they don't have any paint thinner in them, uh, which seems like an easy call to make. Microsoft has introduced a microfluidic co cooling breakthrough. Huh. They're claiming a three times improvement in pulling heat away from the package the chip by first cutting hair sized channels in the silicon and then running coolant through them. They use AI to map the hot spots and direct the fluid. So we're officially at the point where AI is physically improving itself, kind of, and it's only a matter of time before the missiles are launched. But did you know that if you have the right electric vehicle, soon you could give back some of that sweet, delicious power juice back to the grid from whence it came? Three Ford F-150 Lightning owners participated in a residential vehicle to grid or V2G pilot program this summer, offloading unused electricity between the hours of 5 and 9 p.m. and earning participants up to $1,000 over the course of the multi-month trial. Not bad for doing nothing but plugging in. Now for anyone who's privileged enough to charge their EV for free at work, keep your eye on this one. Boss makes a dollar. I make a dime. That's why I sell my company's electricity back to the grid to help with my expensive vehicle payments. Hey, speaking of power, thanks to Logitech's new solar powered keyboard, you don't need an electric vehicle to feel like you're helping the planet. The new K980 can use the sun or artificial light of at least 200 lux to charge the battery for up to four months of use in complete darkness, which should appeal to many of you. It costs a hundred bucks and has an AI button that pulls up Copilot or Gemini, depending on your OS, because those are tools that use a lot of power. Uh, the reason any of this matters is the predecessor of this product, Logitech's K760, came out in 2012. For whoever's been waiting to upgrade, I guess it's finally time. And Origin Code is a new player in the DDR5 game, and they're off to a great start with the world's fastest high capacity RAM modules. But what really caught my eye is this wild active cooling setup that you can mount on top of the Vortex modules. Hello performance, goodbye tower cooler compatibility. But apparently it's worth it because they're claiming nearly 40% more heat dissipation over standard heat spreaders. And now it's time for me to spread my, my wings. This little bird's gonna fly the coop for now, but don't worry, I'll be back on Friday for more tech news.